Hey guys, welcome back to the Dream 80 series. This is phase two, episode two. And this week we're gonna talk about uh, the first things you wanna do on a piece of property as far as protecting it. Um, I've made every mistake in the book, uh, probably most of them twice or three times. And uh, uh, I just wanna do, this is an important episode for um, you not to make those mistakes on your on your property or financially um, and uh, try to save you that, that heartache or that financial stress uh, with a property. So um, I got eight things written down that were, that were big ones, uh, have been for me personally on farms and, and clients. Um, number one is definitely a new gate. It's, it's one of my favorite things is actually putting up a big, you know, trestle over the, over the driveway and a big gate entrance. I just absolutely love those big kind of gates. Uh, but whether it's extravagant or it's a simple gate with new posts there, um, when you put up a new gate, you're telling that neighborhood, somebody else owns this property, they're cleaning it up, they care about it, uh, it looks good, it makes you feel good when you're putting it up, it's your property and you get the keys to that kingdom. Um, it, is, it is a super cool experience to, as simple as it sounds, put up a new gate on a property that's yours. Um, the posts that you wanna use on those, make sure they're treated. Uh, you might wanna put rock in the bottom of them so they're drainable. Um, you can also rent a skid steer with a uh, attachment that, that pounds the post into the ground and it's solid, uh, but spend a few extra bucks on a post, get something that has a 50, 60 year warranty um, and there's a creosote option. There's some really good posts out there. Um, but uh, uh, gate is definitely a cool experience and gate it, put a post-it sign on the gate and tell the world that it's yours and uh, lock it and uh, um, do that step one. Number two, we've talked about this a few times, but signs around the property, but signs around the property and or the entrance. One thing I wanna say is, um, I think it's the, called the cambium layer uh, that a nail goes to into a tree. And if you see posted signs or post signs laying on the ground, a lot of times there's a dead tree there. Um, when the nail goes in there, you're putting rust into the part of the tree in time that's sending all the nutrition up and it ends up killing the tree. So. Um, I just don't like trees dying on my property on the fence lines or around the entrances and having those uh, those widow makers right up in the air. I just don't like having them around. Um, so I always try to put them on steel fence posts or put in another post there. I like to put them way up and out of the grass so when the grass gets you know five, six, seven feet high that uh, you can see them. And then I also like to use ones that um, aren't cheap. So uh, you don't go around, put uh, posted signs up and or the entire exterior of the property and have them fade and have to do it again three years later. Uh, number three, um, a good place to park. So I've made this mistake where I got a mud hole or some kind of entrance to the property and one, I gated it right next to the road where I couldn't pull in a truck with a trailer uh, or I didn't take care of the driveway. And uh, I'm gonna talk about um, the product that you're gonna wanna put down there. I have spent a small fortune on three quarter inch road rock because the gravel company uh, would tell me this is what we put on roads. Three quarter inch road rock with fines will disappear very quickly, uh, especially if it if you're in an area that it rains a lot. So, um, I mean, when you I, I have a driveway that's almost a mile long. Uh, I, I don't know how many trucks it takes, probably 20 to cover that. And putting three quarter inch road rock on that was a huge waste of money uh, that I wish I would have had back. Um, and uh, it it just turns into dust. It'll get absorbed by the ground, and uh, you can put it on there and on there and on there and on there, thinking it's going to build up. It's, it will continue to dissipate into the earth. You wanna start with a breaker rock, something as big as your fist, you know, a, a two and a half, three inch breaker rock. You'll think it's gonna be hard on your tires. It will lay down, it will uh, uh, create a, a layer where you can put road rock or millings on top of that. Um, but if I was uh, from scratch and I was gonna put in a gate, and I was gonna do an entrance, I would do one, um, 90 degree angles at the uh, road right away, turning in and then gated in there long as, as long as my pickup with a trailer on there so I can get off the road if it's busy just for safety and uh, getting the gate into the property uh, where it's a good place to park where I can strap things down and get off the road. And then uh, two, when you're putting down driveway rocks, start with watershed first breaker second, smaller rock and smaller rock and millings third, fourth, fifth. Uh, number four, um, it's important to secure the buildings. So it, you gotta gate the property, you gotta keep people out of there, but securing the buildings is also very important. Um, if you're gonna have, uh, I'll get into this next, but if, you, if you're gonna have critters running around out there, I mean, you are buying a property in the country. It's a wild place with wild animals. There's gonna be raccoons, skunks, 
possums, armadillos, you name it, it's gonna be there and it's wanting to get into your building or your house or whatever it may be. Um, birds will be you know up in the rafters uh, if you got uh, steel flopping around on the roof um, or you got a door open or something flopping around in the wind you always want to screw it shut or close it and encapsulate it as much as you can um, just so it doesn't continue to deteriorate if you have a roof that's off um, and it starts raining a lot some of the wood on the interior will rot if animals get in there they cause all kinds of ruckus it's just better to say okay i have some buildings here they may not be you know the greatest buildings but um, just shut them, lock them, wire them shut, uh, uh, just close it up and you'll have a lot less problems uh, when you do actually take the time to close up the building or bring some, some long screws out there and, and just take care of putting the steel back on the building and cleaning it up. I cannot say enough about cleaning up the property as one of the first steps uh, before any of these other improvements. Cleaning up the garbage, um, burning, burying, getting rid of you know old concrete, old deadfall and trees that might be around a lot, uh, uh, barbed wire, fence posts, garbage, plastic, you name it. Rent a, a 20, 30 yard dumpster, get it out there, fill it up with all the, all the things that are just an eyesore and you never have to think about it again. Um, I'll say it falls under the buy once, cry once because you don't want to have to pay to dispose of, uh, of that sort of thing. But once it's gone, it's gone. And if that hazard is gone, now your kid, uh, your, your children out there, your pets, uh, your spouse, you're just not, you don't have to look at it. You don't have to talk about it. You don't have to plan to do something around it. And there's no, there's no safety hazard out there. The last thing we ever want to hear about on a property is, you know, there was somebody that owned it that trapped previously and there's snares all over or there's you know, um, my next line item was uh, uh, some of these other poisons. Um, there might be oil or antifreeze or um, mouse poison or something on the property. Just go around uh, and take a look and say, okay, where is the hazard? Is there a big hole? If you're, I can't tell you how many times where it's like, oh, there's a, there's a big hole there or there's a stump, you know, I'll, I'll get to that. And then I'm mowing with the bat wing and the grass is, is six feet high and I hit a stump the size of this table. And then that breaks something and causes something uh, uh, more that needs to be fixed down the road. If you, if you identify the problems and you go to fix the problems first, fill the holes, grind or pull the stumps, clean up the wire, bury some stuff, burn it, clean it up, get a roll off out there, uh, just you know, bite the bullet and, and uh, get a roll off out there have a couple buddies or your family throw everything in there it's done and out of there you don't ever have to worry about it. again it's not a hazard you're not gonna run into it cleaning up some of those things will really give you a more enjoyable experience coming from uh, I can talk about bad experiences all day uh, number seven a water source is a bigger thing than you might think. Uh, if there's a well on the property, a lot of times when we get out west or even down south, uh, having a well on a property is a huge deal to, uh, to have that, that well not only there, but um, like in Colorado, uh, you might have a well on a property uh, that might not produce. So uh, having a well that's one established and two producing with the rights that come along with that uh, already established compared to hypothetically you can put a well in there, um, buying the property that already has that established is huge getting it functioning um, if it isn't, uh, and using it for, even if it's not potable water, using it for filling a sprayer uh, is a mistake I've you know just, just been live and learn, uh, but I've gotten to a property to spray before and only had one tank and thought, where am I gonna get the rest of this water? Can you pump it out of a pond? Can you pump it out of a creek? Is that legal? Is there a neighbor? Uh, what kind of water source do you have? Do you have a secondary tank, uh, like watering trees and plants and that sort of thing? If it isn't gonna rain, where are you gonna get water on the property? So having a plan for water uh, or a plan for a well uh, or some kind of retention uh, or pump, another huge learning experience. Uh, and then number eight, always think about anticipating problems. First aid kit, uh, cell phone charger, uh, cell phone service. Where am I going to have cell phone service for when I do tip the buggy over or the four wheeler or uh, who am I going to call if I get stuck? Do I have a chain? Uh, do I have a battery charger? Is my buggy, you know, I left the key on, the radio's on. Um, uh, I'm two miles back. How am I going to jump start that? Uh, or do I have jumper cables or any kind of secondary option to a tire getting flat, a little air compressor for a little bit of money, buying a couple, you know, first aid kit, uh, safety road kit uh, that has an air compressor, jumper cables, uh, little jump packs. I mean, these things in today's world are, are pretty inexpensive um, for trying to just, 
you know, think about what, anticipating what problems you might have out on the property. So those are some things, I mean, I could, I could go on for the next two hours, I think, with this uh, conversation, uh, but those are the top eight things that are learning experiences from uh, buying farms, being out on the property, and uh, uh, having a aha moment that we should have done things maybe a little bit different, or we could have saved money or saved time and, uh, and hassle along the way. I hope you're enjoying this uh, second phase of the Dream 80. If there's any topic that you'd like us to cover, feel free to put it in the comments. We really appreciate you following along. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing and uh, we'll keep the content coming. Have a great week, guys.